Hi friends, it's Valerie. Welcome back to this week's What's for Dinner. If you are new here, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button and join my YouTube family. And don't forget to leave a like or a comment down below because it really does help my channel. This week's What's for Dinner is going to be a little bit different than my normal like full week of meals because it is my birthday week. I did have fast food or go out to dinner more often than I normally would. Um, for a week, but I did still make some meals so that I would have this video for you. So let's just get started. Okay, so this recipe is inspired by some chimichurri that I saw. Um, I'm just going to be making some substitutions just for what I have based on hand, and I will link the original recipe in the description box down below, and I'm halving it as well. So to my little blender cup thing here, I'm adding about a half a cup of cilantro, a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes, a couple cloves of garlic, a couple scallions that I chopped up. Um, I don't know why I chopped them small. They're going to go in this blender anyways. And then um, like two and a half tablespoons of olive oil, one tablespoon of red wine vinegar, and then the recipe says you can use lime or lemon juice. So I had fresh lemons on hand, so I decided to use the a teaspoon or so of lemon juice. I did add more later because I liked the flavor better. And then a quarter teaspoon of salt and about an eighth to a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And I just put the lid on that. I'm using my little like immersion blender stick. It powers the little chopping cup. But just mix that however you can. And then whatever you have, I mean. And then um, I, as you see, I added more oil and more lemon. Just a little bit more of each because I tasted it and thought it needed a little bit more. Then I move that to a bowl. You can place it into a food storage bag if that's what your choice is. And then put your chicken breast into it. I have two large chicken breasts that I fillet in half to be like cutlets. And I put them and mix it all together. I put the lid on that. And I'm letting that marinate for about 20 to 30 minutes. Now I'm using my Ninja Foodie Grill for this. You can of course just do this in a pan or in an air fryer or even outside on your bigger grill. Whatever works best for you, but I did want to grill this still, so um, I have my Ninja Foodie Grill on high, and you'll, this will just need like 10 to 12 minutes to cook. So I'm placing all my chicken breasts on there, and I'm taking the remainder of that little cilantro mixture and kind of like putting it on the top of the chicken breast here. And I am flipping my chicken at about 6 minutes. You will see it has a beautiful color there. I really love how I can do this in the kitchen and still have beautiful grilled chicken that's nice and tender and juicy. And I'm still going to be using this Ninja Foodie for my side dish. So I'm taking the chicken off the grill. I like to put it on a plate and set it in the microwave. That lets it still stay warm without being too cold. But the asparagus don't take very long to cook. They just cook. I cook them on air fun the air fry function at 400 degrees for about 6 to 7 minutes. That will just depend on how thick your asparagus are. But I just showed that for the purpose of the time. I season them really simply with just like salt, pepper, garlic, herb seasoning. And this is it plated. That chicken was delicious. Um, I would recommend a little more salt in it though. I, I would have liked a little bit more salt for my preference. And then I just serve this with one of those simply pasta salads on the side. Overall, we really love this dish. It's a nice way to remind me that summer is about to be here. It's already really warm for us though. And uh, so I'm ready to be doing lots of grilling with my Ninja Foodie this summer. This is one of my favorite meals and you're going to start off by taking three zucchinis. These aren't very large ones, they're like medium sized and chopping them up. I like to cut them in half lengthwise and then into some little half moon shapes. If you don't have this kind, you could also, if you have access to getting like the Mexican squash, that works perfectly for this as well. And then I'm taking two Roma tomatoes and... I'm just dicing those up. However you see fit to dice them up, if you have one of those little choppers, that perfectly works. I don't know why this day I didn't use my chopper. I, that's when I tend to like to use it, when I've got like multiple vegetables I've got to cut up, cut up, then I like love to use it. If it's like one thing, I don't like to use it because in cleaning it's a little bit more difficult. But anyways, so yeah, dice up two tomatoes, two Roma tomatoes, and I'm choosing to dice up some jalapeno. I started off with one, but I tasted this jalapeno. It was kind of mild tasting. It didn't have like... A super hot flavor so then I added the second one that I have but I do like to keep the seeds out and if you like poblano you could use poblano instead that, that's a really great addition I love poblano it's just I just have these jalapenos to use up and then take some onion about 
one small onion or if you have a large onion just like a half and dice that up to the bottom of my pan here I am adding just a little bit of oil just olive oil and I'm adding in the jalapeno and the onion first and just kind of like letting that saute a moment because they're a little bit firmer than the tomatoes and the tomatoes are going to let out a lot of juice I'm just kind of letting these saute for a moment and then I'm adding some garlic few cloves whatever you like and then I let that become fragrant and then I add in my tomatoes and I'm just getting these nice and coated with the oil and then I'll season them with half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of pepper and I also like to add one tablespoon of like the nor chicken bouillon that adds a nice good flavor I also like to add about a quarter cup of water this zucchini is going to release some liquid but um, I still like to add a quarter cup of water and then a can of drained corn and about a half a can of tomato sauce I almost forgot to add it there and to stir that together place the lid on and let this simmer on low for 15 minutes if you diced your zucchini really small you might be fine with 10 minutes um, I still like it to have some texture not be too soft then once it's done cooking I'm adding some cheese you can add cheese I like it with cheese okay so you can do with meat though if you like chicken, pork, beef, you can have that cut up, put it in there, that's perfectly fine, but I love it with cheese. So I just had some cheddar cheese on hand as well as some Colby Jack. I put those in and then I was like, oh, I want a little more cheese. So I had some of the queso quesadilla cheese, so I added a couple handfuls of that as well. I like it really cheesy, so that's just up to preference on you how much cheese you're going to add. And let that just sit and let the cheese melt. I like to serve this over white rice. This is one of my absolute favorite meals. I love this so much. And as you see, I chose to eat this just by itself. I wasn't super hungry this night, but also this is just very satisfying to me, this is by itself. But of course, if you don't want to serve it over rice, this could be a very good side dish to your main protein. Um, it's really good on the side with like refried beans. In general, it just makes a good like Mexican side dish. I had been craving corned beef so bad and we didn't get any for St. Patrick's Day, so... I had this in the fridge ready to go and I'm um, using my instant pot because it's the easiest way in my opinion now. Going to put the trivet into the bottom, place uh, one and a half cups of beef broth. You could also use beer um, if for a substitute. I just like the beef broth. It's easy. And then I chopped up an onion. I put that in there into large pieces and a couple cloves of garlic or a few cloves of garlic. Uh, minced up into the bottom and then I'm taking my corned beef brisket this is about three pounds placing it on top of that and then taking that little seasoning packet and sprinkling sprinkling that all along the top of that and easy peasy put the lid on and just a side note I am using an eight quart instant pot a six quart would work as well though as long as you weren't going too much bigger on the size of the meat and in the recipe it says you can cook it for 70 minutes to 90 minutes if 90 if you want it way more tender I did that last time I made it and it really fell right apart but this time I chose to have it a little bit more firm so I could slice it and so I did 75 minutes to get that slight bit more tender but if you have a bigger uh, corned beef you're just going to add an additional 10 minutes for each extra pound that you add in and this is it done you're going to want to remove that from the instant pot as well as two cups of the broth and set that aside and then I'm doing carrots and potatoes and cabbage if you are as well now you drop the potatoes down to the bottom then your carrots and then your cabbage I like to half my mini potatoes just cut them to every vegetable to be a little bit smaller and then I just put this back on um, high pressure for five minutes four minutes actually works as well but I like the potatoes to be really tender and then make sure to take the seasonings off of your meat right after that so that it doesn't cool too much because once the seasonings cool it'll be harder to get them off but I just sliced up the brisket and I just served it simply with those potatoes carrots and cabbage I had a side of mustard with this but I didn't picture it here but I love my corned beef with some mustard and this really hit the spot in the craving field for me because like I said I've really really been wanting it I'm going to start off by making the cucumber kimchi. Uh, you're going to need about eight Persian cucumbers. I didn't have Persian, I'm using English cucumbers, so I just used two large English cucumbers. You slice them up. You don't want them too thin. If you're going to have it like right away, like marinating for 30 minutes to an hour, yeah, you can slice them thinner to absorb the flavor better. 
but if you're going to have them like overnight, I make them a little bit thicker so they don't get soggy. I thought that I hit record, but I didn't. So you're going to need to add about a half a tablespoon or so of salt to them. Let them sit for about 15 minutes in that salt to remove the excess moisture and then um, drain out the extra liquid from that. Now the recipe didn't state whether or not to rinse them after and then dry them, but I did see someone recommend that so they wouldn't be too salty, so I did that. And then once they're patted dry, you're going to add in a couple tablespoons of minced garlic, then maybe a couple or like three or to four stalks of green onions cut up. They cut them into like larger chunks, so that's what I did as well. And then I had some red onion that I'm using. You can use one small onion's worth of white or red onion and slice that kind of thin. And then I kind of broke those apart and put them in there. And then you'll need this red pepper powder. This is like a Korean chili flake. This is called go gochugaru, I think. And add two tablespoons of that in. You can find it at your local like Asian markets. And then I'm adding in two teaspoons of sugar, a quarter cup of rice vinegar, as well as a quarter cup of sesame oil. And then you'll sprinkle some sesame seeds in. That's just kind of to preference. And at this point, you'll probably want to add some salt. I really feel like it needed some salt. Now, had you not rinsed the cucumbers and left that salt, maybe that'd be fine. I'm not really sure 100% of how that was supposed to be because they were unclear. I just saw this like on TikTok. And then I just gave that all a good mix together and I set that aside in the refrigerator for about four hours. And then when it was time for dinner, I took a little over a pound of shrimp. I seasoned it with some Old Bay, which I didn't hit record on, a little bit of Slap Ya Mama, some of the Kinder's garlic and herb, and some paprika. I just tossed them all together like that. I, get, I added some more paprika and then some of the Kinder's to blend just for some like salt, pepper, garlic again. I love the Kinder seasonings. They're so great. And then to a skillet, I added some oil and a little bit of butter and let that melt. And I'm adding my shrimps in there. Shrimp are so easy to cook. They're so versatile and like five minutes they're done so it's so great and they even defrost from the freezer in five minutes if you just leave them under running cold water so I love that so much and I don't sit there flipping each individual one that's just a lot of work I just kind of toss them around for that five minutes and if I see that a shrimp needs you know has a like translucency to it meaning it's uncooked I kind of like give that one a help and we'll specifically flip that one but normally it's not too much hard work and then in five minutes or so they're done and i serve this over some white rice i have that cucumber kimchi now um my boyfriend wasn't the biggest fan of the cucumber kimchi and i didn't expect him to love it he honestly doesn't love pickles so like that vinegary taste he doesn't like that so i knew that that wasn't going to be the biggest thing for him but um i'm not going to say it was my most favorite thing ever i'm going to play around with it it was good it was like a nice freshness had a little bit of spice i love the vinegary taste but i think i would like to try it out like playing with it a little maybe add a little more sugar for a touch more sweetness like pickled ginger or pickled radishes the way i like them um and then maybe adding a little bit more salt but all in all it was fun to try something new and it was a nice fresh taste that it added to the dish but i would definitely give this a try again i still enjoyed it um i just want to play around with it a little bit and i will make a note that it's called kimchi but it really isn't fermented the way kimchi is um but it is a nice fresh like cucumber salad all right, so my birthday is on Cinco de Mayo, which is May 5th, and I couldn't make my mind up on what I wanted, but I ended up going with Old Faithful. My favorite restaurant that I've loved since being a child because it's local to me is Northwoods Inn, and they make amazing steak and potatoes. Everything they have is so good to me, but I got a filet mignon. I got a medium rare because that's the way I like it. Some of their rice pilaf. They have like a cucumber not cucumber they have a cabbage salad that's like vinegary and a side salad as well that has like their house blue cheese which is one of my favorite things uh their baked potato has their cheese butter on it which they are very known for their cheese butter they make incredible cheese bread with that cheese butter it is so good you could eat it by the basket it is amazing in fact half the time i won't eat my meal i'm just eating lots of cheese bread there and i'll take my meal home because i'll be full <laughs> but you can reheat your meal but you can't have more cheese bread you know so so good and i was so happy to have this on my birthday another hometown craving i'd been having was this chinese food place that we love called tasty goody so went there and got some 
Um, I like that. I like a green bean chicken. It's really good. I ended up getting orange chicken as well, but normally I get mushroom chicken, and I was sad because I didn't see it. And I had already had her serve me orange chicken, and then I saw the mushroom chicken. Disappointed on that, but it's okay. I still really enjoyed it, and I love their chow mein. And it had been a while since we had takeout Chinese food, so I got some egg rolls as well. And I like to dip them in sweet and sour sauce. And this really hit the spot. We haven't had this place in a long time, so I was pretty happy. And another fast food favorite of ours that we love to share is uh, from the hat and they have these huge orders of like chili cheese fries and then they're known for their pastrami dip so if you've ever had the hat you know it's pretty incredible it's greasy and heavy but it's so good to have on occasion um, so it was very satisfying and we loved it thanks so much for watching friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that little bell so you don't miss out on any future videos and i hope you all are having a great day